So the siren of a stationary ambulance emits sound waves at a constant frequency of 680 hertz. So we have um, the frequency of a source uh, being 680 hertz. And then a man is standing with a detector that records the wavelength of the sound emitted by the siren as shown in the diagram below. And yeah, there you have it on the left hand side. And then it goes on to say uh, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. So we have our V uh, being equal to 340 meters per second. And then 6.1 says uh, calculate uh, the wavelength of the detected sound. Uh, this is uh, quite an easy one um, because we all know that uh, the frequency is equal to the speed in the medium uh, divided by the wavelength, right? Uh, we are given uh, the frequency of uh, the em emitted sound and it's said to be 680 hertz and then uh, the speed of sound in air uh, is 340 meter per second, right? So we have 340 divided by what we're interested in, the wavelength. From here, you just cross multiply and we get our wavelength. So we're going to have wavelength is equal to 340 divided by 680 hertz. And then 340 divided by 680, that is 0 0.5 meters. So the wavelength of our detected sound is 0 0.5 meters. And then we have 6.2, which starts uh, by statement. It says the ambulance now moves at a constant uh, speed along the road towards the man. The detector now records the wavelength of the sound, of, of the sound which differs from the previous reading uh, by 0 0.05 meters. Okay, so we have a change uh, in wavelength. Uh, which is equal to 0 0.05 meters. Okay, before we go any further, um, we just see that the ambulance is moving towards the man, right? So from here, we should know that the w the new wavelength of the detected sound will be equal to um, 0 0.5 minus 0 0 0.05, which is 0. Uh, four five meters uh, up to so far there's no question that is asking us to do this but then it's just obvious because i'm reading the statement and i understand what it is saying so i know that the new wavelength that is going to be uh, detected is going to be 0 0.45 meters and then 6.2 says uh state uh, the doppler effect uh, that's just a definition uh I don't expect anybody to get that wrong. It says the change in frequency, pitch, or wavelength of the of the sound detected by a listener because the sound source and the listener have different velocities relative to the medium of sound propagation. This definition is just basically the formula really. It's the change in frequency, uh, pitch or wavelength of the sound detected by a listener because the sound source and the listener have different velocity relative to the medium of sound propagation. And then we have 6.3. So 6.2, that's the definition. And then 6.3, it says, how will each of the following have changed when the ambulance approached uh, the detector compared to when the ambulance was stationary? And then we have 6.3.1. It says, a uh, distance uh, distance uh, between the wave fronts. Uh, the distance uh, between the wave fronts uh, is uh, directly proportional um, to the wavelength. And if you can see um, here, uh, I've already uh, shown you that uh, the wavelength will go down uh, when the sound source is moving towards the listener. So for 6.3.1, we'll have uh, decreased, right? Because uh, the options we have is uh, increased, uh, decreased, or no change. So we're going to have decreased 
because uh, the wavelength will go down so that means that the distance between the wave fronts uh, decreased and then we move forward to 6.3.2 and then how will the frequency of the detected waves uh, change okay the frequency is equals to um, the speed uh, divided by the wavelength right so frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength the wavelength went down so the frequency goes up right so we're gonna have increased and then 6.4 says calculate the speed of the ambulance right so in nobler effect there's really two three formulas you can use you can have the frequency cost to the speed divided by the wavelength and then another formula you can use it's always uh, frequency of listener equals to v plus or minus uh, the velocity of the listener divided by v plus or minus uh, v uh, v plus or minus uh, the velocity of the source multiplied by um, the frequency emitted by the source right and then this question says uh, the speed of the ambulance this formula cannot help us with the speed of the ambulance so this is the formula we're going to use right so now uh, we have to identify all the information we have and then decide on how we can determine um, the speed of uh, the ambulance so the ambulance is the source right so we are interested in this uh, vs here we're interested in this vs we have v because v is the speed of uh, sound in air and then frequency of source we have determined it. Oh no, no, we didn't determine it. it. It is given to us at 680 hertz. And then frequency of listener, we can determine it uh, because we now have the wavelength uh, when the ambulance is moving towards, right? Which we determined to be 0 0.45 meters. So we're gonna have a frequency of listener equals to 340. Uh, divided by 0 0.45 uh, and then that will be in the units of s so let's leave it like that let's not uh, solve it any further we're just gonna uh, keep it like that so now we have um frequency of listener equals to uh, this is uh, the speed of sound in air and then the sound so uh, the, the listener is stationary so we're gonna have plus or minus zero right and then divided by the speed of sound in air again v and then the source is moving towards when the source is moving towards we get a minus in the denominator so we're gonna get minus uh, the velocity of the source multiplied by the frequency and emitted by the source if you don't know how this formula comes about and why i'm choosing minus on the denominator then watch uh, my introductory video that I'm, I'm gonna link on the top left corner and then uh, the frequency of listener uh, we say that is 340 uh, divided by 0 0.45 and then uh, v is 340 then plus or minus zero we don't have to put anything there so we have uh, 340 again uh, minus velocity of source multiplied by uh, 680 hertz now when you add this step it's just a matter of uh, how you want to solve it and uh, the mathematics right um, it's you're, you're almost done with the physics here so the way I'm gonna solve it, I'm gonna divide uh, both sides by 680, right? So I'm gonna have uh, 340 divided by 0 0.45, and then everything divided by 680, right? And then if I divide by 680 on the right hand side, uh, that 680 is gonna get cancelled out. So now we're gonna have 314 divided by 340 minus velocity of source 
I'll go ahead and cross multiply. I'll get 340 divided by 0 0.45 uh, multiplied by um, 340, right? And then minus 340 uh, divided by 0 0.4545 uh, multiplied by a velocity of a source, uh, which is a cost you 680 multiplied by 340. So I can take this expression here to the right hand side. I'm gonna get um, minus 340 divided by 0 0.45 multiplied by velocity of source equals to 680 multiplied by 340 minus our expression, right? So let me just uh, try a uh, copy it and paste, right? So minus this expression here, right? So after that, uh, I'm gonna divide uh, both sides by uh, minus 340 divided by 0 0.45, right? So that I can isolate uh, Vs. So I'm gonna get uh, Vs equals to, let me copy uh, this expression here. Um, so I'm gonna copy that expression and then I'm gonna duplicate it. Uh, so now I have uh, Vs equals to uh, this expression uh, divided by minus 340 uh, divided by 0 0.45 and now I can put uh, <laughs> this entire expression here in the calculator and determine Vs. The reason why I don't want to press the calculator before I get to the answer is because I'm avoiding making mistakes, right? I, I'd rather put things in the calculator once and get the answer rather than uh, put things in the calculator a lot of times and risk uh, making a mistake, right? So I'm putting it on my calculator right now. Um, so divided by minus 340 divided by 0 0.45. And that is exactly, um, exactly 34. Oh, 34, why am I writing 340? Exactly 34 meters per second. If you have uh, divided along the way, you've multiplied and you put it in the calculator, you're probably going to get 33, something, 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 or 34, something, something. But then if you just solve it without putting it in the calculator and you only press the calculator at the end, you're most likely to get the most accurate answer.